Hello everyone. So in this short video, I would like to explain you what are the different types of bonds which are seen in our body. So remember in our skeletal system, all the bonds are not looking alike. These bonds are structurally and even functionally, these bonds are different. So let us classify how the skeletal system or the bonds are divided into various types. So to classify the bonds, there are certain criteria. So what I am going to demonstrate here is, first is the region wise classification of the bonds, that is regional classification. So remember we have two types, axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. Appendicular skeleton means the skeleton of these limbs that includes both skeleton of upper limb and lower limbs. So remember example for the appendicular skeleton is humerus that is located in the arm region. Again you have the radius and ulna these are the two bonds in the forearm region. So once you come to the lower limb the femur and tibia fibula these are all the examples for the appendicular skeleton. Remember axial skeleton that is located mostly in the the trunk and head and neck. So the skeleton of head and neck plus trunk you can include as axial skeleton. So you have plenty of examples, your skull, your vertebral column and also the ribs with the sternum and again this one, hyoid bone, everything you can include as axial skeleton. So these are all examples for axial skeleton. So we covered axial skeleton and appendicular skeleton. So next is according to shape of the bonds. So this is another criteria to classify the bonds. So that is according to shape of the bonds. You have first variety called as long bonds. Remember the long bonds as the name suggests you that will be having mostly two ends and middle shaft. So most of the long bonds are vertically placed in anatomical position so that you have upper end, lower end and there is a middle cylindrical elongated portion. This is called as the shaft of the bonds. So in any bond, if you could clearly define two ends and middle shaft that you can consider as a long bond. So as this one, the humerus, the bone of the arm, this is an example. Similarly, once you come to the lower limb, this is the femur. Femur is a long bond because you could define very clearly apparent, lower end and the middle shaft. So such bonds you can call as long bond. Next type is short bond. So for short bonds, I am giving you the example carpels and also in the foot you have the tarsus. So these are the example for short bonds. Remember in case of short bonds you cannot demonstrate two ends and middle shaft. Okay so like demonstration or like classification of the parts you cannot appreciate. So such bonds you can call as short bonds. Again the metacarpal bonds these are example for miniature long bonds. They are tiny but it is very clear that they have two ends and shaft. These are called as miniature long bonds. So we covered long bonds and short bonds. Third variety is flat bonds. Flat bond, I would like to give you an example. The sternum is a flat bond. And also the ribs related to the chest cavity. These are all flat bonds. These are flattened either from side to side or from above downwards like that. And also the shoulder blade that is the scapula is another example for the flat bond. So these are flattened. The third variety is irregular bond, sorry fourth type, irregular bond. Irregular bond means there is no definitive shape. So an example, the hip bone is an ir irregular bond. Similarly the vertebrae, in the vertebral column you have vertebrae. So these are irregular, there is no particular shape for these bonds. Such bonds are called as irregular bonds. Next is pneumatic bond. The pneumatic bond, as the name suggests you, there are air filled cavities inside. So any bond is showing air filled cavities inside, you can call as pneumatic bonds. So remember, these pneumatic bonds are restricted towards the skull region. Okay, for an example, the frontal bone is a pneumatic bond because inside the frontal bone you have frontal air sinus. Maxilla is another pneumatic bond because inside the body of maxilla you have maxillary air sinus. Additionally, you have the sphenoid, ethmoid, everything. These are all example for pneumatic bond. And your mastoid bond behind the ear also is an example for pneumatic bond because inside the mastoid bond you have the air filled cavities that will be opening to the middle ear cavity. What are the functions of this pneumatic bond? The pneumatic bond performs three main functions. Number one, these pneumatic bonds are reducing the weight of the skull very drastically. Number two, air conditioning effect because the inhaling air or inspiring air will be passing through the pneumatic bond 
and its temperature will be converted into an optimum temperature of the body temperature. The third function, adding adequate resonance to the voice. So this also is performed by the pneumatic bone. That means mostly by the paranasal air sciences. Okay. The last type of bone, based on the shape, you have a special variety called as sesamoid bones. So the best example for the sesamoid bone is the patella or the kneecap. This is the largest sesamoid bone in our body. Remember, sesamoid bonds are very peculiar. The word meaning is seed-like. So the special features of ses sesamoid bonds are, these are not present at the time of birth. These are developed after birth and developed inside the tendon of the muscles. And this minimizes the friction. And remember, these sesamoid bonds are devoid of periosteum. Okay. So these are some specific features of the sesamoid bond. The best example is your patella. Similarly, in your upper limb, that is in relation with the carpal bonds, there is a carpal bone called as pisiform bone. Pisiform bone also is a tiny bone, that is sesamoid bone. 